Hey guys, this is a, uh, I thought I'd start this release video just making a scene. I don't show you guys enough the process of making scenes and I'm going to be doing some more along with Zephyr. And uh, what you're seeing now is a bunch of assets from the recent release. You're looking at some new buildings you haven't seen before. Um, you've certainly seen some of the, the desert assets from before, but here's a, here's a giant bathhouse. There's a, uh, you know, a, a trade hall. And I'm just showing you the mechanics of building a scene. The scene took me about 10 minutes to build. I'm just fast forwarding it for you. Just so you can see the mechanics of how easy it is to put something together with, with all of these pieces. So this release is a really exciting one. There's not just, you know, all of these new desert uh, buildings and this motif that you guys haven't seen before with just like really interesting roofs and stuff like that. But there's, there's, um, there's new buildings altogether that come in, you know, the regular snowy and other versions. There's animated assets. So I'm going to talk about the Gorgon, who's a new artist that hit the scene recently, and he's doing some amazing stuff. And I'm going to show you some of these new living assets that he's working on that will take any flat map and, and make it alive. And then I've also got some new macros and some other things that are coming out in this release just to give you more tools to build your world. And so it's not just some artwork here. There's some technology that's that's coming out with this release. And of course, I've got some pieces and some components as well to help you with the new uh, Molinet system, his uh, set of modules that I've already done a video on. Everybody's really excited about it. I'm going to build another scene with that. Here you're looking at some of the living components, some banners and some fire that uh, the Gorgon built. But we're going to talk about the Gorgon. We're going to talk about the Molinet system. We're going to give you guys some, some things to think about, some stuff to hopefully inspire you as far as what you can do. But here I am just running around in a scene that I just made. And I'm running around in the bathhouse and there's, you can't hear it, but there's trickling water and you know everything's already lit it's all walled it's all ready to go and it took 10 minutes to build and this is a pretty compelling desert town that was just built out of nothing so let's get started so the way my content works is pretty easy it's just seven bucks for everything it's crazy i know it's not always going to be that way but if you want uh, the only thing that's different is if you want all of my archive of my dungeon draft files then that's twelve dollars but Otherwise, for most people, $7 a month is, is it. You get the entire modular system. You get all my premium maps. If you leave, you keep everything. You just don't get updates. So, you know, again, this won't always be the case, but right now it's probably the best deal in the VTT world. To get it, you just go to my Patreon. So patreon.com slash bailiwiki, which is linked in the video notes. The, the pin post at the top of my Patreon has all the links that you need where you really want to get to is these two documents. The first is my FAQ and installation guide. It's got everything you need, including Patreon links, how to install my modules, info on other modules that you'll want to install, and all kinds of FAQ and tips for using my content. The second document is my modular system guide. It's got everything you need to know about my modular system specifically. What's in it, how to install it, how to use it. It's even got the entire change log and release history for the entire system with video walkthroughs for everything. So if you're curious about this content, go find those. They're public documents. You can open them up. I'll link to them in the video notes as well, and you can check it out for yourself. Okay, so let's walk through the, the new assets. First of all, you'll notice this is the town square that you saw in the last release, this uh, town that sort of modeled after Fandolin. And uh, you'll notice right away that the town square is a little bit more lively than it used to be. I've got Gorgon's flags waving in this scene. So here's the pennant flags that you guys saw. We're going to walk through those here in a second. There's also some blue flags waving out in front of what could be the coster. And then there's some, some blue banners hanging out in front of them as well. So let's talk about what's available now in the Gorgon's new assets. So within my town prefabs, you have these new, this new folder for animated. And this is where all of the Gorgon's assets are. 
And let me just kind of walk you through what each one of these are. First of all, there's fire that he's created, which I love. It's just a really great quality fire. And what these are, there's a torch and um, campfire and brazier versions of it. These, these ones in red are for dungeons. That means that they're always lit. So even if it's daylight like it is now, they'll still be lit. Uh, these ones that are white mean that they're only, the, the fire will still work, but they won't be lit until you actually turn the lights down. You also have banners. So you've got blue, green, red, and yellow. You can put the banners down and they're meant to be roughly in the right spot. Although if they're not, you just hold down select and you can move them around. You could do banners as um, tokens as well, but I think they're easier to deal with this way. Remember, you can always turn on uh, quick edit mode and you can move things around if you need to that way as well. The other good thing about the system is you can resize them. So I can double the size and my banner will render double the size. So those are your banners. Uh, you also have just the fires by themselves. These are actors. And so you can just move these fires around, drop them into any scene, and they come with lights already attached to them. They also, uh, this large fire comes with fire sound crackling around it. Any of these large fires that I've created as prefabs. So you can use these in lots of different ways in lots of different maps. You also have fireflies. These fireflies are come in blue, green. You can't really tell their colors yet, but if I turn the lights down, it's the yellow ones, you'll notice that there are faint uh, blue, green, and colored lights around them. Uh, it looks like I missed a couple on this, which I'll fix for the release. But these are the fireflies and they do come with lighting already connected to them. I also created one in a prefab mode that you can create or you can shrink and grow as you need to. You also have flags. These flags can be resized in the same way that you saw before. And of course they can be turned. I'm holding down shift or you can hold down control to turn them slightly. And then of course you have the pennant flags. And these can be resized in the same way. They can be resized two ways. You can either do it through the control token, or if you turn on quick edit mode, you can resize them that way as well. And last but not least, we have a swarm of flies. We have them in both an actor and a prefab mode. In both cases, there are sound effects attached to them. So if I select a token that's near those sound effects, then you'll hear the flies buzzing. These are great for putting over dead bodies or putting in, uh, I, I put them in outhouses. This is just awesome for, uh, for just dressing up and making those subtle little things that make your maps come alive. So if you guys have interest in picking these up, certainly uh, these come in my pack, but you can get them yourself directly by going to Gorgon's Patreon. He's just starting out, but I'm really impressed with the work that he's doing. It's an example of a scene that he built. He's taking all of these components, these birds flying, this light coming down, these leaves falling, these trees that are gently swaying, and he's making these individual components. So I, I highly recommend if you want to bring your, your maps to life that you go check him out and definitely support his work. Uh, this is the kind of thing where you can take any flat map and you can bring it to life using the the prefab system that I use. So definitely like uh, what, what he's doing. I subscribe to him as a Patreon and definitely looking forward to seeing what Gorgon has here in the near future. But you can find him at patreon.com slash the underscore Gorgon. And I'll link to him in the description of this video as well. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to use the the new system. These are interior walls that I built as prefabs. They're already walled for a foundry and they're meant for these blank spaces, these buildings that I've got that, that have nothing inside of them. And what I'm doing is laying some basic prefabs down, like those fireplaces that include sounds and light, some other things that make it easy for you to set it up. But once I get these basic things in here, now I'm going to use the Molinet system to drop in 
all of these objects. These are using the Forgotten Adventures pack, which is the same artwork that I use for my base artwork. That's why it matches my stuff so well. I just did a video recently on this. I recommend that you check it out if you haven't yet. But what I'm doing is spending about 10 minutes building this basic scene. It's a, it's a home, you know, by a semi-frozen lake. And, you know, I'm putting a, like a bloody deed in here and, uh, you know, just, just some basic things set up really quickly. You know, I've got some bloody footprints that are leading away from, you know, the back door of this house. There's now some blood spots inside of the house itself. I'm clearly making this whole thing with pieces, but this could be any map that you've got that you want to take some of these assets, put them in there and, you know, tell whatever story you want to tell. There's a little rocking chair by the fire. Put a little rug underneath. Basically, that space is done enough for a quick, you know, unexpected, you know, thing that you have to set up where you just can't find the right map. Here I'm dragging in, you know, another prefab for the table, putting some more things in place. And now I'm going to play around with some of the other things. You can, you can make things glow like this magic circle. I don't know why there's a magic circle in this house, but there is and it's glowing and it's awesome and it looks like a disco strobe and your players would stumble in on this and just think, what, what is, what's happening in here? Um, but these are all effects like, you know, here's a magical mace that I have just sitting on this bed. I'm going to hide it from players until they find it, roll a, an investigation check. And I'm just going to throw in some trees really quickly, some rocks and a stump. And I've essentially built a whole whole thing here. So these interior walls are new and they're just meant to help you build scenes like this on the fly whenever you want to. Before I get into the new assets in this release, let me also talk about the new macros. Um, there's a couple of new things in the macro department. First of all, I organized my macros that I include. These are macros that are sourced from lots of different places, from modules, from my community members, uh, from, uh, from anywhere where I think that there's something interesting that I like to use for my games. I'll put them in here generally and show you how to use them. First of all, you'll notice right at the top, Bailiwicky's Tome of Dust and Shadow. This is a really cool macro that was just created by Token Magic Effects. Not this specific one, but the ability to create it. And you can see I made a custom icon and I threw it into my, my town's macro pack. And if I click on that macro, oops, I have to actually select a token. Let me show you how that works. I'll put a player down, I'll select him, and then I'll press this. And what this is doing is it's going back to my macro list and it's looking for this, Bailiwicky's Tome of Dust and Shadow. This is where I've taken all of my visual effects macros and I've put them all in one convenient place. Uh, FX Master and Weather, Moulinette, which I just showed you guys, um, and some custom macros that you can use to apply to things that you pull out um, of, the, uh, of the Forgotten Adventures pack. Other things that I use, like drop shadows in general, um, water effects, creating flame effects like this one. Well, they're all referenced inside of this interesting little GUI. So instead of having to import these every time, you really just need to have Bailiwicky's Tome of Dust and Shadow in here. You click on it and it'll go back and look at all of these and put them in this little format. Why that's helpful is like you, maybe you have this guy right here and you wanna give him a ghostly shape. Well, if you click that, it'll apply that macro, or you can clear it and it clears it. But likewise, let's say I wanna set them on fire. Well, I've got a really nice Token Magic Effects macro that sets things on fire really well. And so I'll press that and it'll light this character on fire. It works really well with drawings and other things if you want to instantly light a city on fire, for example. But that's how you use that Tome of Dust and Shadows. You can make your own effects macros and do the uh, compendiums and, and do the same thing that you saw here. Other things is I put some helpful macros for building scenes. So you'll notice after I build this scene, I've got a lot of these control tokens around. Now they're invisible and I can move them off to the side and I often do that. But if you want to get rid of them altogether, you can click this little token attacher, delete all control tokens. KLG produced this for us and it will immediately delete, uh, it'll, it'll unattach everything from any control token and then delete the token itself. It's super helpful if you finally get to the point where you've got your scene the way you want it and you just want to delete all the control tokens and make it so everything's really easy to move around. 
I included some other standard token attached ones in here. They're also in token attached compendium, but I found it convenient to find them here. Uh, setting elevation lets you create uh, some elevation macros that will automatically put your your players at different elevations. And then this wall height macro is also super helpful. If you click it open and execute it, it will let you adjust every single wall in the entire scene to a certain height or just the walls that you have selected. And you can set the height to like 10 feet and instantly all of the walls in your scene will go to 10 feet. If you build a lot of scenes like I do, this is massively, massively helpful. And this was Rastinia's contribution from, uh, from my uh, Discord community. He's just a total wizard with stuff like this. And he's got some more in here that he's provided as well. I also have macros for making things work. These are generally things that you want to have living in your world. So you want to import everything inside of this folder. It creates uh, leaves rustling, the traps, the, the gates that open and close. Um, if you're walking through water and things like that, these are the macros that my prefabs will call out in order to make them work. So you, you generally want these in your world. And lastly, are some, just some utilities, turning parallaxia on and off, um, showing your performance report. So you can run this and actually see with any given scene that you're looking at, how many walls and lights and tokens and other things you're running and some other things that will help to see how how much load is a, a particular scene putting on your um, on your graphics card and things like that. And lastly is this toggle scene navigation folder. If you've used my um, town and you'll know that there's a lot of scenes to that. Well, what this does is you you click it open, you execute it, and you can select an entire folder. In this case, I can select the town folder, and I can turn navigation on or off for every single scene inside that folder. And that's very helpful if your users have explored the town now and they want to be able to travel around it at, at will. So anyway, that's the macros. Let me show you now what some of the new assets are in this release. So first of all, you can see there are a lot of buildings. Now these buildings are mostly my existing buildings from other sets, but now they're in a desert motif. So now you can do desert based towns. You can see I've added some uh, animated stuff here just to dress this particular scene up, but there's empty buildings that you can use my interior walls with and really be able to make anything that you want. But you spend a lot of time thinking about Adobe style. You know, I live in the desert myself. This Adobe style roof, uh, Moroccan style roofs, um, some Middle Eastern style stuff, just to give you a little bit of smattering of what you could do with desert uh, motifs. And I'll start to expand more specifically desert themed buildings here in the future. But these are really set up to be able to, um, you know, get on top of these and do some interesting chase scenes because these roofs tend to be flat. You know, you can turn them back into a floor and now they won't disappear and your players can run around on top of them. You can use that wall height macro that I showed you a second ago to instantly make all your walls, you know, no more than 10 feet and you can have your players scramble across roofs and things like that. Super fun. If, uh, if you like playing those types of games, but, uh, these are all of the class three buildings and there's a ton of them in here, but I also have done all of the class two buildings and you can see all of them here. They all have roofs. They just drop in. You can double click on these control tokens to actually see, um, what is this? So this is a C2082 home and you can go in here into your actor compendium. And you can look at that home in its different variations that it comes in. They all come in snowy, regular, and then now desert version as well. Here's more maps like the ones that you're used to seeing, all in desert format. Great for battles on top of these. And what I'm really excited about are these. So as you, some of you know, we do contests in my, my community on Discord uh, and with Patreons. And I've got some really, really great artists in this community, and two of them have really shown their stuff uh, here with this last, uh, this last contest. And they both actually won um, a year of Patreon for these contributions. The first one is Abominable Rob, and he's just got such a crazy attention to detail. 
and he built such fun. This is a, a bakery um, patisserie, I think is that, that that's what you call it. Here's a latrine that he built. Here's, um, and I'm just going to zoom in close so you can see the level of detail here. Here's a woodcutter's home. I mean, just outstanding. Lots of useful things that you're going to need. You know, it's a warehouse. There's a cobbler in his home. Here's a bathhouse. And what's great about this is uh, Zephyr put these, these prefabs together using Abominable Rob's artwork. And he even put splashing sounds in here so your players can <laughs> splash around. It's fantastic. More storage. Here's a, here's a bar and this storage essentially can go with it. It's a little tavern, just one of these drop in anywhere kind of taverns. Doesn't matter what adventure you're running. Again, it, this all comes in snowy and in desert versions. So you generally always, and you have a ton of taverns now to pick from and there's more coming as well. Um, but I mean, these are just, these are just really great shops. And again, just, you know, this is a potion shop and you can find it over in the actor's compendium. Here's some homes, maybe it's an inn. This one's great. So he calls this the trade hall. And you walk into this really cool room, there's some fires burning. You walk into this room, you've got maps, you've got all sorts of cool stuff. You've got artwork on the walls. He's using some Tom Cartos with this. Uh, he's got you know stuff going on in the back, a ledger, some trading things going on. Just, just a really, really cool space that you can be super creative and it really kind of lends itself to a lot of storytelling. You finally got stables now, which is awesome to see. Uh, this is the, oh, just a simple cottage, right? With a really cool, like, you know, roof and outside, another simple home. This is actually a bard's home. It's got some musical instruments in there. Just really, really well done. So, Kudos to Abominable Rob for creating just a really cool one. This is a uh, this is an inn with a, a peeping tom sort of uh, thing that he can look in on on unsus unsuspecting people that are sleeping here. It's just like really creative stuff. Your players may never see that. And then I just love this. So he made a uh, a windmill, and inside the windmill, and I've never I haven't seen, actually seen this before, but let's see if this works. There's a grinding sound from the windmill. As you get closer to it, you can hear this grinding noise. Hopefully you guys can hear that in, in, this, uh, in this audio. I'm not sure if you can. But I mean, look at this. This is all just drop-in kind of stuff. So pick your favorite map, throw a windmill in there, and you're good to go. So great job, Rob, for these. Of course, uh, Rob wasn't the only winner. Uh, this is Shafto's submissions and fewer submissions, certainly, but really, really cool ones. So this is a, um, a bathhouse, a large one, and it's got, you know, more of the, the sounds that you guys heard before. You can hear the dripping noise, splashing around, got this beautiful garden out here. Listen to that. If you, I hope you can hear this audio. You can hear the, the water sort of uh, uh, rushing through the area here. Just, just really, really awesome stuff. I mean, the attention to detail is just out of this world. And then he made this library, which I love this. I mean, this is just great for any adventure. You're going to have a library scene. You've got rooms here that you can unlock and expose to your players. This one. Uh, just has some really fun things going on in it. You know, little study rooms, just a great, great space for storytelling, some magic circles. And then, of course, he's got that library, but a ruined version of it. So maybe this was ruined in the past and it was rebuilt. Maybe your players come back and they find the library utterly destroyed. But you will see that if I turn the lights down, there's just some great glowing effects here in this library that's now that's now ruined. So great job to these community members. I just I'm really looking forward to what these guys produce in the future because this is just really off the charts quality stuff. There's a lot of quality submissions. It was very difficult 
to judge these. But if any of you are interested in uh, participating in a future contest, by all means, show up at my Discord and make yourself known. Lurk there if you want to, but we, we'd love to have you um, apply to a, to a uh, contest in the future. And as you can see, um, the submissions, uh, we do some work on them to get them ready, but finally put them into the, the modular world and keeps feeding back to the community more and more content. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love this stuff. And there was a ton of work that went into this release, but now you've got, you've got all the ability in the world to, you know, create, uh, lots and lots and lots of things between Molinet, between the desert release, um, you know, all these new macros, all these additions by Gorgon to bring life to maps. This just feels like, like a really fun time in the VTT world to me. And I hope you guys are having fun along with me. If you see something that you have questions about, by all means, leave a comment and, uh, you know, like subscribe to this channel is always helpful and, and come on, step by our, our discord and say, hi. It's an open community. We love designing things, a lot of technology people, a lot of artists and a lot of people in between. So, uh, you know, whatever you like, as long as you like ideas, that's kind of the coin of the realm around here. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and we'll, uh, we'll look forward to the next one. In the meantime, have fun making all your maps.